Hello there. Welcome to Anybody Can Code C++ series. So if you are new to this series, you can click on the card that's above to check out our previous videos. Hi guys, welcome back to the ABC series of C++ from Facebook. So in the previous video, uh, you had seen a lot of basic things what is required for you to learn regarding, uh, you know, a C++, right? So you had seen header files, you had seen what is namespace, std, you had seen uh, how to print a basic statement. So in today's video, this particular video, we will be seeing in detail what data types are and how you are going to use it. Okay. So we have a list of data types when it comes to C++. So specifically, we have, uh, uh, you know, four or five which are really important. And apart from that, uh, we have uh, certain more which we usually do not use. Okay, but I'll be telling you those as well and uh, certain things which are really important. I'll be uh, explaining you in detail. Right? So we have got, uh, you know, certain basic things which are basic data types which are required for you to code in C++. So the first one being Boolean, then we have uh, char, then we have int, then we have float and then double. Next up is void and finally we have something called as a string. So for starters, we'll, uh, you know, consider just one data type at a time. So uh, here we have a Boolean as the first beginner. So Boolean is nothing but a data type which, uh, you know, considers only two specific values, true or false. Okay. And each and every data type, it, it has its own specific set of byte size. Okay. So over here, Boolean, uh, it stores one specific uh, uh, byte when it comes to Boolean data type. So uh, what exactly do you mean by storing? Right. So if you have to use uh, a set of variables, right. So let's say you have to store number five somewhere. You cannot directly use it all the time. Right. So let's say you want to calculate uh, you know, five plus four or you want to calculate five plus ten. You cannot keep on writing five each and every time. I'm just giving a basic example, guys. So what will. OK, so you can see that uh, it has returned face prep over here. So let me just, uh, uh, you know, increase the window size over here. So this was the things what I had taught you in the previous video, right? So I had told you Boolean uh, only takes in uh, uh, the return types, uh, true or false. So let me just declare uh, uh, a variable called as X. Okay, I'm just taking one variable called as X. So this will be our container inside which uh, we'll be storing certain data. So let me just try to, uh, you know, give some values to it. So I'll be storing 48. Okay, so instead of uh, printing face prep, uh, let's just try to print X. Okay, so whatever value I have stored inside X, I'm just trying to print it across over here. So uh, let's just uh, run and check what exactly it will give me as the output over here. So you can see it has returned a value one, right? So as I told, uh, Boolean only takes values true or false or when it comes to binary language, true means one and, uh, you know, false means zero and anything apart from a literal zero, a Boolean value will return me a true value. Okay, for example, let's say uh, I print, I, I store zero over here inside X and I try to uh, compile this particular program. So the compiler will give me the value zero itself because zero means false and zero means zero. But let's say I try to give uh, even uh, a very high value, let's say 100 and I try to, uh, you know, print that particular value. It will be re uh, just returning me a value called as one over here because anything other than a literal zero, even a negative number, for example, let's say minus 14. Okay, so I'll try to print minus 14 with a Boolean data type, uh, but what will return me is a one because anything apart from a literal zero is a true according to the compiler base. So I hope you've understood this, uh, uh, you know, Boolean data type. Now let's go for the next one. That is character data type. All right, so just like uh, your Boolean data type, your character data type stores the data which is related to a character. Okay, of any natural language system, not only English, uh, be it uh, Hebrew or Japanese or Chinese, uh, but slightly the uh, you know size of the characters might vary. Uh, but uh, when it comes to character data type, it is only used to you know store characters and uh, print it along. Okay, now let me just uh, show it to you how it exactly works. So here, instead of uh, uh, you know uh, taking Boolean data type, let me just take uh, character data type. So character data type is written as char. So you can see over here, the compiler will prompt a series of, uh, uh, you know, data types. We have got uh, char32 underscore t, 16 underscore t, and wchar underscore t. So these are all the other data types uh, of character 
uh, which would require a higher byte size. But when it comes to uh, uh, English language or uh, English uh, alphabets, we just require one byte size. So uh, we'll not be going for all those other uh, data types. We'll just stick with our simple uh, CHAR. Okay. So uh, just remember, guys, a character when you're storing, you'll have to use a single quotes to store the characters in the container or the variable. Okay. So let me just try to print a capital A over here. Okay, I'm, I'm printing capital A over here. So let me just uh, run this particular program. So the compiler is giving me the output as uh, A, right? So you can see it is giving me the output as A. So let me just try to print uh, uh, any other character. Now percentage is also a character, right? So let me just try to print that low. It's, it's, it's a special character when it comes to uh, a set of symbols or something like that, right? So let me just try to print a, a space. Okay, space is also a character, right? So let me just try to print that. So space is being printed, but you cannot see it. That's it, right? So this is the speciality of, uh, you know, the data type character. So any specific character, what you give to the compiler, it will just print it as it is, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to the character data type. So let me just try to print a series of characters. Uh, will it work? Okay, let me just run this. Okay. It's not working. I'll tell you why it's not working. Uh, for time being, just remember that character data type is only used uh, to print uh, a single character. So you can see the color code has changed to green. A single character, be it space, a special character, or any English ca uh, alphabet uh, character, uh, can be printed uh, using character data type. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell you why you cannot print series of characters. We'll uh, go for it later. So next up, we have uh, integer data type. Okay, so we have uh, uh, the size, the bytes as given as uh, four bytes, right? So here as the name says uh, INT, which means integer, you can only store integer type of data over here. So uh, you can uh, take any values which start from minus 21474836482214748647. to Now it's really, uh, you know, a huge number. So uh, you'll not be able to remember all, the, all of the times, right? So you're not a robot, you cannot definitely remember. So I'll just give you a hint why exactly the size limit is so much. So every byte is equal to eight bits, guys. Okay, byte, the lower version of byte is bits. Okay, so uh, eight bits is equal to one byte. So here, if it is four bytes, I will be having eight bits. Okay, one byte is equal to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, one byte is equal to eight bits and four bytes is equal to 32 bits. Okay, just have to cross multiply over there. And when it comes to uh, bits, the operation is done in terms of uh, power of twos. Okay, if I'm talking about the first bit, it'll be two to the power zero. If I'm talking about second bit, it'll be two to the power one and so on and so forth. So if it is 32, the last bit will be two to the power 32, right? So two to the power 32 will be the total, uh, uh, you know, size of uh, the integers that can be uh, included. Uh, but integer, as you know, it contains negative values as well, right? So if you divide 2 to the power 32 exactly by 2, okay, you'll be getting the value 21474836484. Okay, so why is it from minus, uh, you know, 21 till 48, okay, till plus 21 and something till 47. So this is not 48 over here when it comes to the positive size uh, because uh, 0 is also an integer, right? So uh, we have just taken one bit from the uh, positive side of the integer, we have given it for zero. And that is why uh, the range is from uh, 21474836483648 till 21474836447. Okay, so let me just tell you how exactly it works in the compiler. So here, instead of uh, writing character, I'll just uh, uh, give a int. Okay, and instead of storing a character over here, I'll just store, uh, let's say, 96. Okay, and I'll uh, print uh, this particular value what I've stored in the variable x over here that is 96 and the compiler just prints uh, 96 over here, right? So as simple as that guys, now let's say I want to print uh, a very huge value, let's say uh, 26455, uh, okay, let's see if this gets printed. So it is inside the size limit of uh, integers, so it is supposed to be printed and it gets printed, right? So this is the, you know, specificity of integer. Now let's go ahead with the next uh, data type that is a float and a double data type. So in float data type, uh, uh, you know, just like integer, we have something called as decimal values or floating values, we call it in number system, right? So float, it, it uh, takes in four bytes of uh, space and double takes eight bytes of uh, space. Uh, but the uh, beauty of these two data types is 
float also stores in decimal type of uh, uh, you know uh, integers and uh, decimal type of values and double also stores in uh, decimal type of values but the difference alone over here is you can see the first difference is the byte size so float has 4 bytes of data uh, uh, you know capacity and double has 8 bytes of data capacity and also you can see the float decimal precision okay it is comparatively lesser when it comes to double decimal precision okay so what exactly do i mean by precision okay i'll, I'll explain you in the compiler so here instead of uh, taking it as an integer i'll just take it as uh, uh, you know double okay so after i've taken uh, sorry let's take float first uh, then let's go for uh, uh, you know double so i've taken float and i've uh, uh, written uh, 5.6 okay i'll try to com uh, compile this and run okay when i uh, try to print 5.6 it is supposed to give me 5.6 okay it is giving me 5.6 but let's say i take uh, integer type of data and try to uh, print this 5.6 obviously it will not give me 5.6 but it will give me just 5 okay i'll just truncate the uh, values which are after decimal point and it will give me the integer value alone right so this the uh, value which is present after the decimal point it is called as precision okay now this is uh, uh, you know one decimal precision so let's say i have uh, uh, 5.67 okay i want to print uh, 5.67 i'll be using float over here now when i try to print this particular value it will print me 5.67 okay so that is uh, two decimal precision so when it comes to float it has some uh, you know drawbacks as i told let's try to print uh, 45 uh, e uh, 24 Okay, when I say E, it means uh, to the power. So 45 to the power uh, 24, if I try to print, uh, let's say what it gives uh, over here. Uh, so it gives a uh, 4.5 E to the power plus 25, which means it has a capacity to, you know, print uh, such a big value. Okay, but let's say I give 45 E to the power 100. Okay, now let's just check uh, what happens over here. So 45 E to the power 100, when I use uh, float data type, you can see it gives me infinity, I and F right but let's say i change the data type from float to uh, double okay now let's try to compile this particular code so now what happens is instead of just giving me infinity value it has the capacity so double has higher precision or higher size because it has eight bytes is capacity right so it can print even 445 e to the power 10 as well when it comes to your uh, uh, values right so these are the differences guys so please try to remember the differences between float and double so next up what we have, have is a void right so basically void means empty or nothing right so why do we have it in data types let me just explain it to you so instead of uh, uh, you know uh, taking x as a double or int or something i'll just take void over here and i'll try to run over here okay so let's see what the compiler has to say okay it says that uh, variable or field x is declared void so void is uh, void cannot be printed okay it is out of scope okay so we have a specific uh, uh, you know uh, this looks like a function guys it we, we call it as size of operator it is not a function okay size of is an operator so in detail i'll be telling you what exactly it is so for time remember just uh, uh, that it is used to calculate the size of any data type okay now let's say uh, i want to calculate the size of integer so i'll just take size of and i'll uh, you know take int over here i want to know the size of the integer data type so i'll just run this particular uh, code let's see what happens okay it says four as i told integer takes in four bytes now let's check it for float okay fell o80 float and i'll see what happens when i run this particular code so it says uh, float has uh, four bytes of data for double guys so uh, if you remember uh, double uh, had eight uh, as a byte size right so let's just check it for double and i'll run it over here and uh, you can see it says eight bytes of uh, data right so uh, this is uh, the thing but let's see what happens when i give void over here so when i give void and try to compile this particular code so you can see it says uh, invalid application of size of uh, for void uh, type which means that void is basically not supposed to have any data uh, data storing capacity it is just a blank space right but why are we using it exactly is because uh, you know every uh, function is supposed to have a return type okay when it comes to functions you'll understand better why it is so so uh, if you do not want uh, the function to return anything what we'll be doing is we'll just be giving a void uh, return type over there 
okay so uh, if you remember we used to give int in in place of uh, you know in before me okay that is called as integer return type uh, for me okay if you give void over here it means uh, that uh, a specific function does not return anything simply returns a uh, it, uh, it just uh, executes the codes over there right so let me just try to run this particular code now it should work fine okay so uh, yeah it says uh, if it is void mean it cannot return anything so run now okay so it works fine so i hope you uh, understand guys so when it comes to the function concepts i uh, will be telling you in detail uh, why void is so important when it comes to functions okay so uh, this was uh, the end of uh, the data types but we have one last data type which is really important guys and that is your string data type okay so uh, if you remember the character data type when i had explained you uh, i had told you the set of characters cannot be you know printed now when it comes to character data type correct so that is why we have something called as a string data type so it is basically an extension of character data type which takes in a set of characters and just prints it along over there okay so let me just uh, uh, take you to the platform and tell you so uh, instead of having uh, a lot of other data types what i'll do is i'll just write a string over here so string and uh, i'll just give this a particular value let's say uh, uh, you know a b c d e f g of that sort okay and i'll try to print x over here okay i'll try to print x so run okay so let's check uh, what the compiler has to say so it is printing a b c d e f g and uh, one more thing what you might have noticed is whenever it comes to string data type i'll be i'll be using uh, uh, you know double quotes but when it comes to character data type i'll be using a single quote so remember these differences guys it will help you a lot uh, uh, when it comes to uh, data types uh, mcqs or as uh, you know you code for uh, higher questions right so these are the small differences which will make a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, errors in the code so please remember uh, how to do the things accordingly so let's try to uh, do something else now so what i'll try to do now is uh, i'll try to uh, take certain values okay so if you remember i had taken integer i had stored a value called as uh, let's say i i think i stored 45 or something correct so let me just try to print this it should print me uh, 45 okay but now, but now let's say i do not want to print just 45 every time i do not want it to be hard coded i want to take the inputs from the user and then i want to uh, you know print it on the screen so how do i do it okay this will be explained in the next video guys related to inputs and outputs okay so i hope you have understood the concept of data types so be there on the next video to learn how to take inputs and uh, uh, outputs accordingly from the user till then happy learning Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe and do click on the bell icon so that you get notified when the further videos are released. And also check out our Instagram page and WhatsApp broadcast services. The links are in the description below.